Varsity Sports Live on Midco Sports is presented by Avera Orthopedics and South Dakota State University. Welcome back. No Varsity Sports Live coming up later tonight, so we're going to do it now. Uh, North Dakota had a live game as well tonight. Jamestown and Fargo Shanley, and let's go up to Jody Norstedt in West Fargo with uh, tonight's North Dakota high school football highlights. Hi, Jody. Hey, guys. How you doing? Yeah, that was a great showdown. Lisbon and Central Cast met. Divide County, big win tonight, 58-52 over Ray Powers Lake to win the Region 8 championship for them. South Border over Napoleon tonight, 28-8. A couple of those big nine-man scores. But let's jump into the highlights. Century, the top-ranked Patriots, looking more like themselves tonight against Mandan. Brady Dahl on the keeper, a 7-0 lead for the Patriots. And it's Mandan with a counterpunch here. Jackson Scott tips it and picks it. Nothing but green in front of him, and he turns it into a pick six, tying the game at seven apiece. Later, Braves attempt the go-ahead field goal, but Sarah Burgum's attempt is blocked. Trayton Hinderer picks it up, but he's going all the way. Tons of big plays in this one. A Carson Jablonski kick return touchdown right after that, tied it at 14, but Peyton Arndt punches it into the end zone here, makes it 21-14 at the half, and that's your final. No scoring in the second half as Arndt and the Patriots win their 27th straight. At that halftime, you know, we weren't in the ball very well in the first, so we threw a lot, but halftime we decided that we're just going to secure the ball and we're going to work the clock, and, you know, we came out, we were a little upset about that first, that first half, and we we're going to have a repeat of what happened last week. Yeah, Dickinson gave them all they could handle last week. Cheyenne sitting in first place in the EDC, paying a visit to Legacy, two schools that started together years ago. First possession, Grant Warkentine to Caden Rar. Finds the end zone for a 6-0 lead. Into the second, Josh Henricks in the rugby scrum gets into the end zone. They weren't done in the quarter. Ball at the 40 for the Stangs. Connor Entz, he's getting some playing time. Matt Entz's son, he runs into the sun and finds Pater for six. Another two-pointer, Cheyenne up 22-0. Cheyenne blitzes legacy tonight to stay unbeaten at 36-7. Well, this was our TV game tonight. Third-ranked Shanley coming off back-to-back -back losses, hosting the top-ranked team in 11A, Jamestown on homecoming. Blue Jays lost their starting QB, Peyton Hochulter, last week to a broken collarbone. Jackson Walters replacing him, finds a big tight end, Brody Hillstrom, for a 7-0 lead. But the Deacon offense starts to cook. Michael Rosberg left this game after landing hard on his throwing shoulder, but not before he threw this beauty of a touchdown to John Gores, who was unstoppable tonight. Shanley up 26-7 at the half. How about a one-handed pick for a D-lineman? Brady Boyle, go crazy. Rosberg out. This is sophomore Landon Meyer finishing the game. He finds a wide-open Chayton Soka Porter to salt the game away. Shanley wins at 33-13. Gores with a couple of touchdown catches. We caught up with him after the win. We've just been all year in practice working our butts off. We've just been waiting to have that game where we finally kind of put it all together. And tonight, you kind of saw a little bit of that. St. Mary's beat Shanley a week ago. They're taking on Wapaton tonight, a 3-1 Huskies team. Late first half, Nick Schumacher calling his own number. Saints up 24-14 at the break. The Huskies' high-flying offense was grounded tonight. Blake Schaefer has been setting the world on fire, but here he's picked off by Landon Gerving. The Saints take the bark out of the Huskies with a 51-20 win, improving to 4-1 on the season. The boys in blue looking good the last couple of weeks. Central Cass, how would the Squirrels rebound after getting smacked by Kindred 37 zip last week? The Squirrels hosting 4 and 1 Lisbon. Have you ever seen an angry squirrel? It's not a pretty sight. Brandon Majo to Jake Deutsch, 7 0. 3D TD passes for Majo tonight. Fast forward to the second. Let's make it a three touchdown lead here. Owen Wiersma bulldozing, 21 0 home team. A few minutes to go before the first half. Here comes an extra credit nominee. One handed catch. Look, Ma. Jake Deutsch again, 64 yards. Central Cass with the bounce back win, 41 to eight over a Lisbon team that had picked them off the last two years. This one will be huge come playoff seeding time. Langdon at more Munich and it's 43 game win streak on the line against four and one Harvey Wells County. Langdon's first possession, we're number 42 tonight. Jack Rumfo punches it in from a few yards out, 8-0 Cardinals. Next Harvey possession, quarterback Isaac Freeze hits this guy who's so good. Madden Thorson, deep pass, beauty of a catch. All tied at eight after the conversion. 
Landon gets the ball back, slowly marches downfield, race Worley, no problem. Cardinals go up 14 to eight and the home team gets it done barely, 37 to 30. Their closest game in the streak since 2018 against Carrington. They'll try for a 45th straight win next week against a Hillsborough Central Valley team that is ironically the last team to beat them in the state championship game, whatever it was, three years ago. Well, that's a wrap for North Dakota. Coming up next, we have highlights from South Dakota. The busy night continues for Jason Andera and Tom Neiman. Varsity Sports Live on Midco Sports is presented by Farmers Union Insurance. Varsity Sports Live on Midco Sports is presented by Avera Orthopedics and South Dakota State University. All right, welcome back uh, at the half in Rapid City. It is Rhapsody Stevens leading uh, Sturgis 28-14 to at the Rushmore Bowl. What else was going on tonight? Oh, I can't wait Jamie? to get into it. We had Harrisburg get tested now for the third week in a row. Would they survive? Let's check out the highlights. All right, at Roosevelt at Howard Wood tonight. And Gavin Ross had a huge game for Harrisburg. 213 yards, three touchdowns for Ross. Look at this interception, though. That is uh, Asmaran Muhammad picking off Knuth Woo! with one hand to keep it tight. It was a 10-7 game at halftime. And this got crazy, though. Late in the fourth, though, Harrisburg fumble. This is Ty Nocteborgen. Returns it for a Roosevelt touchdown. The Riders are ahead 34 to 31 tell. late in the game. He just kind of took the ball away. It was a fourth and one they stopped him on, and then they just kind of took it. This is the first play after that, though. Knuth to Lincoln Carlson for the game winner, and the Tigers find a way again, 38-34. This is the theme of their season. Find a way to win. Jacob Knuth had a huge night, and then on the ensuing drive, you know what, 40 seconds left in the game, something like that, 56 seconds left. Roosevelt could not bring it up the field, and the Harrisburg Tigers survived once again. Brower was great for Roosevelt. Uh, Nelson Wright had over 100 yards on the ground. Knuth went for 358 in a couple scores, and then Gavin Ross ran it 38 times for over 200 yards. Woo! All right, five and zero. Harrisburg hangs on. Sioux Falls, Washington. Meanwhile, at Brandon Valley, Washington, two and two, coming into this one. Brandon Valley, the other unbeaten in the big schools at four and zero. Sam Spolton with a nice grab there, but this was one of the plays of the game early on. Ryan Dahl with a scoop and a score. And the Lynx take a 7-0 lead. Thompson, good throw. Beat a patient with a nice grab. And that leads to an Elijah Tanai touchdown to tie it up at 7. Yeah, he's been a guy who's really broken out in these last couple of weeks. Brandon Valley got a field goal. They were up 10-7 at halftime. And then here, late in the game, uh, Peyton Egan with the go-ahead, made it 17-7. Washington added a field goal with about eight minutes left, but there was no more scoring. 17-10 final. For their five wins this year, Brandon Valleys, they scored two touchdowns in. And this one, only one offensive touchdown. They continue to do it with defense. And they are 5-0 oh on the season for the Lynx. All right, first game of the Rushmore Bowl in Rapid City tonight. Jefferson at Rapid City Central. Tons of turnovers early, and then Taylor and Ashley got going. Yeah, six turnovers in the first half of this game, but Griffin Wilde didn't have a ton of yards, but got a touchdown there, got a touchdown right before half. Taylor and Ashley came out the last play right before halftime. Uh, looked like he might have had a head injury, but he was okay. He ended up having a pretty good night, throwing three touchdowns, all of those uh, three to Griffin Wilde and one to Sam Siegfried. Thomas Heiberger, yeah, did come in there and throw one of those touchdowns to Wildy. They were up 28-0, 35-6 final, and uh, Jefferson is now 4-1. All right, the game here right now going on in Rapid City in the Rushmore Bowl with Sturgis and Stevens and the Raiders with Jed Jensen and Easton Ogle hooking it up a couple of times. That was early in the game. Sturgis comes right back. Connor burned on a 13-yard run. 7-7 tied late in the first quarter. But Jensen with a touchdown run, and he goes back to Ogle. Stevens reels off 21 straight points. Owen Cass with a touchdown sneak right before the half to get the scoopers uh, within 28-14 at halftime. 
All right, Lincoln and O'Gorman. Lincoln three and one coming into this one. O'Gorman one and three. And Dannon bring with a touchdown there to Peyton Hagee. And it was seven to six. Lincoln with the lead early on. The Knights get a field goal. Field goal attempt. We got it blocked there. Nothing working. Hey, There's the field goal. Here's the field goal. O'Gorman up nine seven at halftime, Jandy, but who's Angel Jershegi? Angel Jershegi is one of the four guys in the state with over 300 yards rushing. He continues to get a lot of those touchdowns, and they did enough at the end of this game to get the win in Lincoln. Four and one on the year, the most surprising team for me in 11 AAA. Maverick Jones had a touchdown to put O'Gorman ahead with about eight minutes to go, but Lincoln got a Tate Schaefer to Trent Peterson touchdown in the uh, final quarter there, 21-17. Lincoln over O'Gorman. In 11A, unbeaten's Canton and Madison going at it at Trojan Field. Both teams 4-0 coming in. One versus two, we had a lot of, lot on the line here. I think these two teams might see each other once again. There's Peyton Neven, condolences to his family as they lost his dad, but uh, he gets a nice score there. Canton had a 7-0 lead. Ricky with a completion here to get him close. Bruce Galdi had a couple of touchdown runs tonight for Madison. Yeah, 17 rushes, two touchdowns. I wasn't sure they would be uh, physical enough to run the football. They were physical enough to run it. They were physical enough to throw it. Nate Ricky, 212 yards passing on the night, and they just played a better overall game than camp. This was a 10-7 game at halftime, and Madison pulls away to win it, and uh, the Bulldogs get to 5-0, first loss of the season for Canton. All right, Harriet Selby taking on Ipswich Edmonds Central in Aberdeen at the new football stadium at Northern State University. Brendan Begaman. And Harriet it Selby in the lead. Wolverines capitalize on an Ips uh, Ipswich fumble there. Harriet Selby had a 24-14 lead at halftime. Tigers battle back in the second half. But uh, Trey Hedick. There's a touchdown run by Carson Goal for Ipswich to make it 24-22. This game was tight, but uh, Chance Gregg with the touchdown grab there. The offensive lineman puts Harriet Selby up 32-22 early in the fourth, and the Wolverines are 6-0. Another win over a 9-AA team. Harriet Selby area looking strong. Avon and Gayville Valen. We got two undefeated teams left in 9B. These were those two teams. And Gayville Valen got it going early on. Andrew Gustad, their stud, senior running back, makes a play or two. We knew this would be a high scoring game. Both teams able to put up five or six touchdowns per game. Well, they did it tonight. Lincoln Thury catches the touchdown pass from Riley Ruxigal. And Avon continuing to stay in this one. Gustad, once again, the story of this game. Somehow gets out of that, puts Gabriel Ballin back. It was back and forth. The Raiders had the lead for a while, and toward the end of the game, Avon came all the way back, found a way to win, and give Gabriel Ballin their first loss. Avon could be the fifth team in 9B to be ranked number one after this week. Tough to be number one in 9B. We'll get some other 11 AA scores when we come back. Second half, Stevens and Sturgis coming up when we come back. Varsity Sports Live on Midco Sports is presented by Farmers Union Insurance. <laughs> 